Organize Me Radio, episode 38, Color Guru. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson, and today's guest is the founder and CEO of Color Guru. Please welcome Jeannie Stitt. Welcome, Jeannie. Thank you, Naima. I'm so happy to be here. So I am extremely excited to learn more about you and about your business. Can you tell us what is Color Guru? So Color Guru is a virtual service where we analyze our clients' hair, skin, and eye color to match them with their ideal color palette for clothing. And what this helps them do is look better in everything they wear, shop more simply, and easily create a coordinated wardrobe. So then how do you, how do you match people? Um, what's the process like? Yeah, so the process is um, people submit photos. Uh, and we found really early on when we started the business that we needed to see a lot of photos of people. You can't just look at two or three because... You know, I'm sure you've had that experience where you go outside and take a picture and then you come inside and take a picture and you look really different, (laughs) you know, depending on the lighting, depending on what you're wearing, depending on the shadows, you know, all of that stuff. So we require a minimum of five photos. Um, Most people submit seven or eight photos. And then um, we also, our clients all fill out a questionnaire. Um, It takes about 10 minutes to complete the questionnaire, but Basically, the questionnaire asks really important questions like, you know, what happens to your skin in the sun? You know, some people burn, some people tan, some people have no change to their skin in the sun. Um, And so, but it's helpful for us to know that. Um, And then, um, you know, we ask some other questions, describe your eye color. You know, we can't always see in every single photo, um, you know, the eye color really clearly, although we always make sure we have at least one where we can see it really clearly. But then what we do is we sort of cross check what you're telling us with what we're seeing in the photos to make sure we really have a clear picture of your coloring. And then we match you, um, you know, with your ideal color palette and send that in uh, a digital form for your phone. And also everybody gets a laminated card for their bag or their pocket. So then does the color palette change? Like, does it change with age as your hair color changes? Um, Does it change with sun exposure? You mentioned that, like whether they tan or whether they burn. Um, And how often would they need to update their color palette? Would it change minimally or would it be a drastic change? It typically doesn't change at all for most people, okay? Now, there are a couple exceptions to that. Um, One is if you do a really drastic hair color change, like if you naturally, let's say, have black hair and you dye it really bright red or something like that, you know, that could change your color palette. Um, In most cases, it probably would. However, if you're talking about sort of natural hair color changes or just, you know, getting highlights or tweaking the color of your highlights or, you know, something like that, that is typically not going to change your season. Um, Going gray uh, typically doesn't change people's season, although sometimes it does. And I hate to give that answer because it's like it really is a case by case basis, but that's the truth. And it has to do with whether you're warm undertoned or cool undertoned. So some, which is a spectrum, okay? So some people are very, very warm. They're never gonna turn into a cool undertoned no matter what they do, right? But there are people who are just on the warm side of the spectrum, but they're close to the middle. And then when their hair goes gray, gray is a cool hair color. And so they jump over to the the cool side of the spectrum. And that happens, I say, in about, 15 to 20% of people we see, they can change from a warm to a cool. It's pretty rare to go from a cool to a warm because as we age, we tend to get cooler and lighter. So I see most people who change season moving from a spring to a summer or an autumn to a summer or a winter to a summer, right? But lots of people, the vast majority of people, Um, even through natural hair color changes, stay the season that they are. They were when they were born. They are when they're middle-aged. They are when they're older. That's the vast majority of people. So it's kind of a one and done service. 
Wow, that is so interesting. So then with people who are, um, once they have their color palette, then what kind of wardrobe pieces should they have? Are there some essentials that they should keep in their closets? Well, I kind of have uh, probably an unpopular perspective on essentials. I don't really believe in essentials. Although I, I will say whatever the neutrals are in your palette, like our, our color palettes include neutrals, whatever your neutrals are, it's good to have some staple pieces in those. Like if neutral, if one of your neutrals is black, which is not a neutral for everybody, but, um, you know, for you, one of your neutrals would be black. Black is a great color for you. And, um, you know, a pair of black pants, you know, like a pair of black, a nice pair of black shoes, you know. Um, but here's the thing about essentials. Um, I really think it, it it really just varies per person. And especially now that a lot of us weren't, aren't working in offices anymore, you know, a lot of us are working from home. Like, if you go online and type in like, you know, 10 essential wardrobe pieces, you'll see like a crisp white button down shirt, which I don't own because I don't look in good in crisp white and, mm -hmm. and I'm, and I'm too curvy to wear a button down shirt. They always pop like those <laughs> buttons pop open. I have that issue too. <laughs> yes. I'm like, this looks good on women who are really straight and I am not really straight. So mm -hmm. like, um, you know, or they'll say like, you know, a black blazer, that's like a classic thing. Every woman should have like a black blazer. And I'm like, well, I don't look at in black and I don't wear blazers. So like that, you know, it's just kind of like, I feel like you get to know the, the key is really to get to know the basics of what looks good on you color wise, which you can do so easily with a color consultation, you know, what looks good on you shape wise, and then what your personal style is. And then from there, you find what's essential to your wardrobe, you know, um, I feel like that's the way to go. And, and those are really the three things that I see um, as like how to break down dressing well, right? Those are really the three key components, our color, shape, personal style. And I also think they should be in that order just for, just for efficiency reason, reasons, because here's the thing, you can walk into a store and you can scan the store for your colors. And then once you know your colors, you can ignore half of what's in that store easily, right? Maybe more than half of what's in that store and just beeline to your colors. Everything you take in the dressing room, you know now is good colors for you. It's going to work together. And then you can assess like, do I like this shape on my body type? You know, do I, it, does this reflect the, my personal style, right? So if you can just get a handle on each of those three things, you can really very easily master your closet and buy things that work for you for years and years to come. Now, I love that you mentioned um, that I look good in, in black because I have so much black in my wardrobe, <laughs> um, but I also love color. So yes. I love color because like if I'm on camera or something like that, then, you know, the color pops through. But in my everyday life, I wear black. Like if I'm going to a consultation or if I'm meeting someone, I'm in a black blazer, a black shirt, black pants, black shoes. I, I love wearing black. Can you, can you tell me what's my color palette? Can you determine just by looking at me? Um, because I do have some issues with having freckles and trying to figure out like, you know, what's right for me. What do you suggest? And should I be shopping every color? Because I do love wearing every color on camera. Okay, so this is a great question. And I'm so excited that you love black because it's such a great staple for you. It looks awesome on you. You're just one of those people who like black lights them up. That is not the case for everybody in black, okay? Um, okay. And so some women, I'm just like, you know, you'd be much better in charcoal gray because it's really just going to highlight their natural beauty best. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to, you know, turn you into somebody else. We're trying to work with your natural beauty and everybody's looks different. But for you, you can really handle black. Um, the top you're wearing right now is like cobalt blue. Uh, and that is a gorgeous color for you. So you are all the jewel tones extremely well, like ruby red, emerald green, sapphire blue, you know, um, amethyst purple. Like those are all wonderful on you. These are the most saturated, clearest colors, but they're also um, cool, cool undertone. Even like a, a ruby red has a cool undertone to it. You look good in the reds that have a little more like the blue undertone, not the kind of orangey or reds. Um, okay. And, okay. You also look good in um, 
the primary colors. So we kind of have that bright cherry red. We have the, the primary blue. If you remember from art class, the three primary colors, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's that bright sort of clear yellow, which, um, you know, canary yellow. If you're shopping for clothes, you can type in canary yellow. Bright, vibrant, clear, saturated yellow. That's a great yellow for you. Um, and women tell me all the time, I don't look good in yellow. It's not true. There's a great yellow for everybody. You just got to find the right shade, like a pastel yellow, not so great on you. Going to wash you out. Okay. Right? You just need like a lot of saturation to your color. Now that doesn't mean that you can never wear lighter colors, right? You also wear crisp white really well. There are some shades of lighter grays that you wear really well. Um, you do wear like a soft pastel pink really well. Um, so you're a winter type. I think I forgot to say that at the beginning. You're a winter type. And in our system, I'll send you a card after this. <laughs> I'll send you a color card. But um, you're a twilight winter type. And so twilight winter is the type of winter that has the deepest um, coloring as opposed to other winter types. So there are three types of winters, three types of springs, three summers, three autumn types. So there are 12 types total. Um, but twilight winters just look amazing in black, crisp white, the jewel tones, the rich, saturated, beautiful colors. And then there are a couple carefully chosen pastels you can wear as well. I love that. Oh my God. That's so fun. That makes me excited to, um, go shopping and look at the different clothes and how, and really, you know, see how it looks on me because I just, I really never thought about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And it really simplifies your shopping. That's the thing. It's kind of this thing you do one time. And then I always tell people you never shop the same way again. You know, um, it, it just simplifies everything. And then the color palette is a family of colors that is designed to work together. So not only, you know, are you picking out things more easily, but things start to coordinate pretty seamlessly in your closet. You know, you don't need to I and mean, unless you really want to, you know, you don't need to own brown shoes. Like brown is not really in your palette. It's not a great color for you, you know? So it's like, you can kind of slowly weed out after you get your color card, the things that don't really work well for you. For most people that we work with, they are things they never liked that much anyway. Um, but they didn't quite know why they didn't like them. And, and often it's, it's because of the color. Gotcha. Okay. So then where do you have your favorite places to shop? Are there places that you recommend your clients go to find good pieces? Um, not really, because it really depends on that client's personal style. It depends on that client's budget. You know, some of my personal favorite places to shop, shop. I really like anthropology. Um, they have some really beautiful things, but their stuff sometimes is a little too unstructured for me. Like sometimes their dresses don't have waists and things like mm -hmm. that. But, mm -hmm. but I do, some of my favorite pieces, when I look in my closet, were like splurge pieces from anthropology, you know, okay. um, or sale rack, because they have a great sale room. Um, but um, I am also a big secondhand buyer. And so I really, and I really believe in secondhand for a lot of reasons, not only environmental reasons, which it's much better to buy secondhand clothing, um, but you can find sort of all the brands you like. One of my favorite things to do is if I have something particular that I absolutely love, you know, that item that you just wear and wear and wear, mm -hmm. I look for a second one on Poshmark or on eBay. Um, because I, I had a skirt that I just loved and I literally wore it till it was almost threadbare. And then I was like, wait, maybe I could find it again. And I typed yeah. in the brand, I typed it in the size and there it was for sale on eBay. So I bought it so fast and like, I would, if you have things you absolutely love that work for you every time, get a second one, you mm -hmm. know, if it's something that might wear out. Um, but yeah, I do love, um, I, I find particularly well, like Poshmark, if you know a certain brand fits you really well, you can shop that brand and, you know, also save a lot of money buying something that, you know, I've gotten most of the things I've gotten from Poshmark are like, maybe they were worn one or two times. You know what I mean? They didn't obviously work for the person who bought them. And um, there's not a lot of like worn out stuff there. You know, it's mostly things that are in really good shape. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So can we also talk about um, capsule wardrobes? Because there is a huge 
push towards minimalism. And of course, in the US, we're not really quite there. It's, that's just <laughs> really not our culture. But there are people who are trying to be more minimalistic in their approach in everyday life. Um, how would someone go about creating a capsule wardrobe? So that's, um, you know, it's a great question. And for years, I tried to create a capsule wardrobe because I, I really like to, I'm just a, I'm a honer down. Like I, you know, I like, like honing in on what's essential in my house and including my closet, but I could not make that work in my closet for the longest time. I would search on Pinterest for like inspiration for capsule wardrobes. And what I found was a lot of those basics that I don't wear, like, you know, the button down shirt or like the blazer or whatever. And I'm like, those don't look good on me. Like I just, I have a very, I mean, everybody's figure is different, right? But I have a very petite and very curvy figure. And like those blazers just make me look like I'm putting on my mom's. Like, even if I find a well-fitted one, it just doesn't really flatter me. Um, and I also found that like uh, a lot of the capsules just had neutrals. And I think the idea is like, oh, all this stuff will work together because it's all neutral, but I just get bored. I need a colorful wardrobe. And so basically the approach that I've taken that's really worked for me once I discovered color analysis um, is, you know, on our color cards, we have 35 shades. So that's a lot of shades, mm -hmm. um, but 35 shades. I stick within the color palette first and foremost, but secondarily, even those 35 shades, that's a pretty uh, big amount to choose from. I kind of break it down. And since I live in Delaware, I have, you know, very cold winter, very hot summer. And so I have a fall and winter capsule wardrobe and a spring and summer capsule wardrobe. And you know, once you start shopping from your color palette, it's very easy to create a capsule wardrobe because you're automatically buying things that go together. Um, but also it limits what you can buy, you know, in a good way, in my opinion, you know. And so what I find is for my fall winter capsule wardrobe, I'm very attracted to the darker and deeper colors in my palette. And for the spring summer, I'm very attracted to the lighter and brighter colors in my palette. And so I probably wear about half and half, you know, like half the darker and deeper in the winter, half the, you know, brighter and lighter in the summer. And that works really well for me um, in terms of just creating a capsule wardrobe. I mean, it just sort of creates itself when you, when you start shopping in your colors. I mean, it's almost like this quick shortcut. Um, yeah, and especially if you want color, you know, incorporated, not just neutrals, because of course we have neutrals in our palette, but palettes, but we also have lots of colors. Okay, and then you have a course called Style Secrets. Tell me about it, and how does it help people? Yeah, so Style Secrets, um, it's only available to people who've had a color consultation because we really um, incorporate the color palette with within the course. Um, but basically it takes it, it takes that color palette a step further and into shape and personal style. And I will tell you, I am a convert in the area of body shape. Like I used to really rail against like, don't put my body in a box. And like, mm -hmm. I don't want to call myself like a pair or like whatever. Yeah. And I will tell you that, um, the number one thing looking back, I took a, I took a, well, I've taken multiple courses at this time on dressing, but like, um, but the thing now that ha I look back and I'm realizing, oh, it, it's not about that. At least it wasn't for me. For me, learning how to dress my shape helped me love my shape. I, before that, I always wanted a different body. I wanted her mm. body. I liked her body, but I didn't want my hips to be so big. I didn't mm. want, you know, all the things. Right. And once I learned how to dress my shape, it was like, oh, I like my body in these clothes. I like my body a whole lot better than I used to, oh, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it kind of unlocked for me a lot of the, I think, you know, I think as women, most of us have some body stuff going on. It's oh, yeah. hard to grow up in this culture and not have that. Um, and any way you can find to love your body more is a great thing. 
And so for me, um, that was big. So I do teach that. Um, and I, I keep it very positive, like how to celebrate this particular shape, how to honor this particular body shape, you know, um, how to honor that particular body shape and really dress yourself, you know, in a way that, that you're going to feel amazing. And then um, the other thing we dive into is, is personal style. And that's really fun because that's that's kind of a deep dive for a lot of people into, you know, what do I really like? It's just, it's so personal. It's really un, uncovering what aesthetically you really love and how to then translate that into, you know, ways to dress your body to reflect that, or, you know, really planning how you want to show up and look and feel in certain outfits, you know, and, and, it's just fun. I mean, it's, I find it to be a really fun course to teach. And most of the women who've taken it have expressed that it, it's, it's really fun to dive into this stuff. And then you also help people with the decluttering of their closets. Um, is it essentially replacing their wardrobe? How does that work for you? So I used to do that. I, I don't actually offer that service anymore because it has the business has grown. I, I can't, I don't work one-on-one -on -one with people in their closets, but I did used to. And um, I will say this, the, the thing that I've seen most is that most women have great stuff in their closets, but they are not clear on what's great and usable and what really isn't working for them. And so they have a hard time seeing the great stuff, right? Um, and so getting clear on what works for you, again, color, shape, personal style wise is key because then all of a sudden you can see, oh wait, I have a lot of things in here that work for me. I just almost couldn't, I couldn't see them because there was clutter all around them, right? You know, as an organizer, right. it's like, you can't see the beautiful things when it's surrounded by tchotchkes, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, it's just the same in closets. Right. And so it just leads to frustration. It leads to confusion. Um, I find that most women I worked with when they pared down to what really worked for them, um, they just became so much happier with their clothes, you know, and they weren't dreading laundry day anymore when they <laughs> didn't have room <laughs> for all their shirts. I used to be there. I was a hundred percent there, you know, um, years ago, like I remember being like, I don't have enough hangers for my you know, all my clothes, I don't have yeah. enough drawer, drawer space. And yet I didn't really like that much of it. You know, I really hadn't discovered a way, a strategy for shopping. You know, I was just impulse buying, you know, which is sort of the way we're taught to shop. Mm -hmm. You know, you go and browse and you see what catches your eye. <laughs> and in that moment, you might like it, but you know, a month later, you might not like it anymore. Um, so I feel like, yeah, the color palette is really, it's a, it's more than just your prettiest colors. It is a strategy for your closet. It is a plan for your closet. Okay. So can you tell me about some of your favorite organizing products to help clients keep their closet in order? Sure. A couple of things pop to mind. One is just simply baskets. Like I used to keep, I don't have enough drawers to have like an a drawer just dedicated to like underwear or like just dedicated to socks. And so I found like baskets in the drawers just to separate those things was just a really simple, helpful thing. Um, the other thing is I am really into, I used to go into so many closets and I was always surprised. Like um, it was like a mishmash of hangers. I am very into like buying like all the same hangers. And it's not just like, there's, first of all, it's way more visually pleasing. And I promise you'll just like your closet a lot more. Hangers last a really long time. So chances are you'll do this once or twice in your life. <laughs> you know, you'll buy a, a big set of hangers. Um, but there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, number one, everything hangs at the same level. So um, everything is just sort of lined up better, right? Also, like if you buy like a decent quality hanger, like, you know, it just keeps things from happening like that weird shoulder pucker that can happen, you know, with like a wire hanger or something. It's really, really worth it. Um, and the other thing it does is that you can use it to minimize your closet if, if you're looking to do that. So for example, um, I have a big set of drawers and then I have two shelves where I keep sweaters and things. And then I have 50 hangers. Now I do change out my wardrobe, you know, twice a year because I have a fall winter wardrobe and then a spring summer wardrobe, 
But I basically decided, okay, I'm going to have 50 hangers. And basically my clothes have to earn a hanger, mm-hmm. right? Like it has to earn a hanger. And um, in the win- fall and winter, I don't even have all my hangers full. Cause I just kind of like grit my teeth through fall and winter. I don't have as many clothes. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't have as many clothes for fall and winter, but I love spring and summer clothes. And In spring and summer, every single one of those hangers is taken. I've got sundresses and I've got skirts and I've got, you know, tops. Now, again, I've got like some pants and things in my drawers. So that doesn't count my pants. It doesn't count things like swimsuits and things like that. But um, for me, it's like tops, skirts and dresses are in my closet. And what that helps me do is just a very natural way to keep your closet pared down. Like if I buy something new in the spring or summer, I have to take something out. Like I have to take out the thing I like least because it has to have a hanger. And so it's just this very simple way to kind of keep your closet from getting out of control. Um, And the other thing I like for drawers is I do use like the Marie Kondo folding technique where Mm -hmm. you kind of like fold things. And then that was a revelation for me, I will say. Like I used to stack everything on top of each other. Everything would get messed up. After two days, it would just be a big mushy pile. And I'm like, wow, this really works. Like you put everything, you roll it or fold it and like put it in its own little area. So when you take it out, it doesn't disturb the other things. And I just like, that is my jam. I love stuff like that. You know what I mean? It really, um, it just makes me happy. (laughs) Um, I love that. I love it. And I love what you said about the hangers because I feel like that's the quickest, easiest way to just change up your closet. Totally. Totally. It's like a quick closet makeover. You'll be amazed. You know, you can get decent hangers for like, you know, a big, you know, 25 pack for like 25 bucks, you know, something like that. You can get two of those, you know, I mean, it's different for everybody. For some people paring their closet down would be 200 hangers, you know, and that's Mm -hmm. fine for some people it's, you know, less or more or whatever, but, um, I, I would challenge yourself to like find what, you know, number feel, feels really right to you and, or pare down your closet first and say like, how many hangers do I really need for these clothes? And maybe buy a few extra, but then just kind of keep it like, okay, these are my hanging clothes. And I, I, this is how many clothes I have. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Now, um, can you tell me what's your greatest achievement as, um, as a business owner with your business? Mm-hmm. I think my greatest achievement is honestly, like there came a point in the business where I had to take a really hard look at the business and what was working. And, uh, you know, it was kind of the 80, 20 rule, you know, look at what is causing 80% of the success. And, uh, you'll see like often that when you're running a business, like the other 20% is just this stuff that's like, you know, it's, is wasting your time and like, you know what I mean? And like, um, and so I had to take a look at what was really working. What was really working well for us was um, we were partnering, partnering with people, you know, we partner with stylists, we partner with home organizers, we partner um, with, you know, declutter experts. We uh, let's see who uh, we partner with some people who um, teach sewing and, and their people are buying expensive fabrics and they want to know their colors, you know? And so we've started partnering with them, um, having them be affiliates for us um, to offer our services to their, their clients uh, and earn a commission for that. And that worked beautifully for us. And it was working beautifully, but we were trying all these other things. And I was like, wait, why don't we just focus on this? Mm-hmm. And when we focused on that, our business just exploded. Like it really took off and it made me so happy too, because I was like, okay, not only is our business exploding, we're giving them money. We're making other people's, you know, daily lives better with like extra income. It felt, it all felt really good. And I think the lesson I learned is like, you don't have to follow anybody else's path. Like nobody would have made a business plan based on that. You know what I mean? Right. But there, but there it is. That's what was working. And so now we're just growing. We've got probably 20 affiliates at this point. Um, and it's, and it's a beautiful thing. Wow. Yeah. Hey, that is so amazing. And I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. It was so enlightening. I just love learning all about color. It's so fun. Can you tell everyone how they can find out more information about you? 
Sure. Um, we're very simplified in our social media. We only do Instagram. <laughs> so if you want to find us on social media, we're on Instagram at your color guru. And then uh, that is also our website. It's yourcolorguru.com. And just so you know, um, for these listeners, for the Organize Me podcast, we are offering a special coupon code. So if you type in Organize Me at checkout, you'll get 10% off of any color consultation package. Jeannie, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. It's been fun. Thank you so much. I just loved it. Thank you for having me. All right. Wonderful. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and be sure to tune in next time for an all new episode.